Hi, my name is Jack Hodgins. Welcome to my channel, and thank you very much for subscribers and comments. And uh, I'll see. Uh, I'm going to start. This video is going to be a bit more about accessories and stuff. Weather's changed um, at the moment it's in the UK. It's um, quite wet and rainy, so this week's a bit of no 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 flying basically. So a bit bit sort of upset about that. But oh, here we go. So I'll keep checking the weather. So as soon as there's, it's dry weather, I don't care. It's a little bit windy, uh, a little bit damp. As long as there's no rain in the air, I'm going to be out fly, flying and getting some more good shots. Uh, so meantime, I've, I've actually collected a lot of um, aerial view because um, between all my videos I do run multiple other channels YouTube channels which is through Camberley, um, Bracknell, Guildford, uh, the bit like miniature town portal sites and they uh, and basically I film around so I do a lot of uh, overhead views of the town uh, I tend to follow the, uh, the old buildings so as old buildings have been collapsed and demolished down and flattened I'm getting my quadcopter out filming it going back each week so there's significant changes in the building structure is a bit more than taken off I'll, I'll film it again and then snap the video together at the end so people can see it from like being demolished down to completely flattened and then um, then follow the build where then they build the building to go back up so they get to see what it used to look like and what it looks like afterwards so and that's all going to be archived online to uh, these temple sites I'm actually building at the moment so I'm covering at the moment I'm focusing on the Surrey area so I've got uh, Camby, Guildford, Croydon I've also gone a bit Bracknell, which is not Surrey, but Bracknell I've done, which is quite close to home here too. Um, so there, are, there I've been f where I've been flying quite a lot recently, and I do a lot of still videos. I do take a lot of them. Um, I use my GoPro 3. Um, I've actually brought um, a, a G3 uh, gimbal, which I'll show you shortly. Um, I carry it on the back of the car with me, so when I see something catches my eye, I jump out and film it. So uh, I don't want, don't want my videos all to be just about the quadcopter. I wanted to add a bit of ground level as well as the quadcopter involved, so we can sort of show people and show you guys yourself. You can take it much more further than the actual quadcopter uh, and make the video more exciting. Because I've seen a lot of videos people put together um, of their flight time, and it's about 15, 20 minutes. You know, you get a lot of this video, and it can be quite boring. Just watch it fly around. They might have their GoPro pointing up and they're flying, it can be pretty boring. So I thought, do it something a bit more interesting than the footage I'm actually received getting. So I wanted to snap things together, to make it into like a movie intro, make it more exciting, and we'll upload them to this channel for you to have a look and hopefully comment and let me know, and I'll we'll keep it going. In between all those, I'll, I'll um, do some more uh, talking and chatting about new things I've purchased and brought, because there's uh, quite a few things in the pipeline I'm going to actually buy. And um, uh, and we'll demo on here and show you and stuff. But um, for the moment, um, I've been scouring the, 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 uh, the websites with the Phantom to see if Phantom is going to be bringing, bringing out Phantom Three. But obviously, so far there's no hide of hair. There's only just literally people saying what could be on the three and stuff like that. But there's nothing, no evidence from DJI themselves to say, yeah, we definitely got a three in the pipeline. Um, so I think the pricing's will drop is really for Christmas. But nothing sort of shows but I'm going to keep monitoring anyway and see, see what comes available but I know so, um, um, I've now noticed a lot in the shops now uh, phantoms are getting very very famous there's, where, where there's a few of us flying around so now there's loads of us flying around so I've bumped into a couple of people in Wundershire where I've flown up in the park for testing and, and playing about with where I get used to like flying and stuff and especially when I do those angles because what you've got a building on, on a flight it flies around nicely around the building not sort of like squarish sort of shots. I want to sort of guide it round, so it looks really nice, basically. So and then the building looks like it's rotating round. The 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 phantom going round in circle, but a nice view. So I mean, practice at the park where I've got plenty of space. Um, if you're practicing things like that, learning your your controls, what you need to do, banking, you, you, you put what, uh, I mean, there's technical terms, but I mean to me, it's like going left or right or rotating it. So you're getting used to like find phantoms and circles um, and things like that. Go to a park, find a big park, it's got lots and lots of fields, and go up about 150 feet in the air, which is the best place, you can still see it, and that way you're not going to be anywhere near, near buildings or trees or overhead wiring, so you know up there you've got plenty of space. And I'll just practice, I mean, I, I find that when you look through the view viewfinder, um, when you're up that high in the air, you, can, you know you're not going to bump into anything, and you're obviously not going to bump into anything low flying basically. So you're pretty safe. So you can start looking at your viewfinder. So you've got Vanta Vision Plus with your your um, app on your phone, whether it's your iPhone or, or an Android app. You can start looking through that. I mean, I purchased a Sunriser 
and so it gets get rid of that. I'll show, I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, it's on my previous um, uh, video I've done on my channel basically. But it's a good thing. Keeps the sun out. It's brilliant. But anyway, when you because also when you're in the end and and the the, pl the quadcopter's facing you, everything goes the opposite way. But my brain's now started thinking more because more practice you get, your brain starts thinking which ones to move to make it correct. So when you're facing towards you, you know which way to push the stick so it carries going forward or backwards because that's what you want, not doing the opposite direction. So it takes a bit of practice, but once you get used to it, your brain starts flicking around and before you know it's second nature, start driving the car. But when you're up in the air, I'll, I'll use the app, but point the camera down slightly so you still see the ground because also when you're filming, you want to see a fair bit of the ground as well as the horizon. Uh, but you don't want it to like completely dead straight because um, then you're just going to see that way. I always bring it slightly, slightly down, pointing down to get a nice sort of view feel from that sort of angle. So when you when you're flying around and you can look on the app and you know where you're flying to, and I always pick points on the on the ground where it's following tree lines or if you're going over a, um, a lake or something, follow the lake lines, and you get to fly around. Before you know, it, you're actually flying around the circle. But I always fly reasonably fast, probably about five miles per hour and then as I'm flying forward at five miles an hour I'll slowly start turning very slight turns and it, then it starts creating that nice circle in the air basically and just keep going around and do that a few times you can get then you get an idea how much twist turn you'll put into it to make it a nice tight circle that's above you or or, or it's going around the lake if you switch across the lake it's massive and it's sort of um, in, a, in a very circular area you can follow the outlines of the lake to go around, then you get a nice perfect view of the lake. I mean, I've seen a lot of you know, YouTube channels where they've flown up towards the lake, look, not even going over into the lake, and just looked around and pulled back and come in a different angle. Gonna, gonna do, they're going to do a nice picture of the lake, fly onto the lake, fly over it, you know, do a nice fly over scene and, and around to get to see the whole lake, what's around the lake, you know. But once you get that, it's a lot of practice. It is actually if you practice and playing, and before you know, it, your brain triggers it, and you can then start looking up in the air. And looking at flying around in circles, things like that, you get some great, great new uh, shots and stuff, and it's, it's quite good fun. Then you get in there and learn your limits of how tight the turns are, because uh, I always find if you turn your, your copter too much, then you get a, a jerk of the video like this when you play it back, and it, it looks terrible. So, it's nice and smooth round, and it makes good footage. But there you go. Let's talk about bits about flying and stuff. But uh, yeah, I've noticed uh, online now there's a lot of places sending DJI. Uh, DJI's, uh, they all, all make some models and they're going from like as cheap as uh, 400 quid upwards and stuff and there's lots of gadgets now and the one that's quite close to me at the moment is Maplin selling the whole range but the trouble is they, they stock a couple of the Phantoms in stock but they don't actually stock any of the accessories, you have to buy it online it would be nice if they stock accessories but I, I do find that the um, the, the uh, they're quite expensive because I popped in the other day because I wanted to uh, charge my batteries on a go because I've only got two batteries and I mean the price of battery is about 100 or quid to buy a second battery and uh, and I thought well if I spend 100 pound on, on a, some sort of charging unit in the car um, that saved me buying extra batteries I can have one in the quadcopter and one charging um, I will eventually buy another battery because I think in theory when you're carrying your pack you should at least have three batteries with uh, a charging unit in the car so you can have one on charge and two in your back so by the time you finish with with your two batteries your third one or you're probably halfway through record, um, recharging your second one to so keep on the go because I tend to like to sort of if it's good weather I want to get around as many places as I w can and fly so if I can have a battery on charge I can keep going and keep going so um, I had a look at Maplins and Maplins do do a DJI Phantom 2 car charger proper DJI Phantom car charger it's 79 what was 80 quid but they didn't have it in stock I had to order it in so in the end I decided to go for this little gadget because um, I couldn't wait, so I wanted to charge it that day because I wanted to do a couple, a couple more shots, and I was on my last battery. So it's a, it's an in-car charger. It connects to your cigarette lighter in the car. Um, there's a unit. Uh, 300 watts. Has a normal plug socket, so you can plug your DJI Phantom charger straight into that. And on the back, it's obviously got a built-in fan, an on-off switch. And it does come with two cables. You get this this cable, which is a cigarette light cable, and you also get one with two like crocodile teeth that plugs directly on the battery. And I, if I'm aware of it, it charges quick on the battery, but it does charge quite well on here. So I, I can charge if I'm going if I'm travelling two miles to my next my next next flying location, I can have my my next battery fully charged. 
so it charges quite quickly on this one uh, and, then I can, and then I can just swap them around so this is perfect this actually cost me £49 so for 49 quid, with my own DJI Phantom charger in there that was cheaper than actually buying the Maplin's one um, so and that's brilliant so if, you, if you're going to get flying around and you want to be out more get a third battery or if you've got two batteries buy one of these Maplin's 49 quid alright so I'll, I'll search on Maplin's and put the link uh, in the bottom for you so that's what that's one that's what I carry in my so I carry that one so that's the char charge unit um, oh yeah, here's the I've got the box I've got the box didn't throw it away um, and that's the other cable that comes with it you can see they clip on the battery fuse and that screws in in the, in the unit itself and you can do it directly from the battery as well so that's quite good because you can use that for anything so you've got if you want your phone charging up things like that great and um, well, so I've got it with me and I've got my phantom I'm going to show what I've got in my bag so let's move on maps out of the way with so here's my nice carrying bag move the keyboard out of the way with this is um, my phantom bag um, I think this was a quite expensive purchase, about £100. Uh, again, I'll put the link to the bottom because you can buy them from various places now. And this is brilliant for carrying phantom in it. It's nice and tidy and it's nice easy to store away and, it, and you can carry it. It carries on your back. And you can go hiking with it. So if you're going to places where you can't park, you have to walk for quite a distance. Great, right, this, is, this, is, this is what you need. So open it up, you've got, uh, you can see here, uh, you've got like a little thing behind here, you can put your cables and uh, stuff like that in there, um, keep them nice and flexed out. This is sort of reasonably hard, but it's not completely, it does bend and flex, but it's enough to protect your phantom anyway. Um, I mean, you can get hard cases, depends how, how rugged you want it to be, but I've never dropped this. Um, so things I carry in my bag are my uh, sun visor, this one I've brought, which I showed you on the, um, the last video I did. Um, godsend. I do find it does give, put, give a bit of light through sometimes, depends how strong the sun is. So what I might do is keep in with the colour of my controller, I'm going to actually spray the inside black to darken it more. Okay, And then hopefully when the sun hits that, it'll black it out even more. Because if you, if you do look, look past it with the light, you can still see through. But it does block a lot of the sun, but I think I might just spray it, spray it black inside it works out but again that's that's pretty good I'll put the links in the bottom because it was on my last uh, video so I'll put it in the bottom for this one um, this was a bit expensive about 24 quid but it's worth getting one of these um, and it's a uh, guy obviously printed it from a 3d printer so but that's really holes here to push your phone out um, it's got the camera hole there so you want to take a picture of your camera as well you can do uh, you've got the holder grip so that's where it grips in there nicely and it still gives you the access to your bottom of your phone so if you're still listening to music or you're charging your phone while you're using it you can do it that way and also you can get access to your side buttons on your phone as well so there's that one so and then I obviously carry my what I'm going to do is uh, when the weather's a bit better I actually got carbon fibre blades um, I bought basically about 50, I think that's about £15 and uh, they're quite strong they don't bend or flex I haven't done a test of them because someone did a test on, on our YouTube channel with these blades and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do a field test. I'm gonna um, get four, two full charge batteries, let's get it in the same condition so make sure the weather's uh, uh, dry. If I'm not I'll just see if I can get get a higher haul out and test it in the hall basically. And we can fly it and see how long they fly with the carbon blades and then how long they'll fly with the DJI original blades, see what one's better because I've I've been flying with these for ages and I don't don't seem to see any sort of real difference. I'm not 100% sure because uh, I didn't really sort of fly long enough with the Phantom Blades. I did buy these quite quickly and replace them, so I might actually um, do some tests. So we do some flying tests here, and when they last, to see if it yeah, does give you any more, more battery or flight time with these. Because uh, they're very lightweight anyway. We'll, we'll weigh them on scales between these and the plastic ones. See if there's any weight differences, uh, and also we'll um, do some flight um, comparisons, like taking off. Uh, well, I'll do a throw throttle in the air straight up, see how fast um, each one, see if they're actually any better cutting through the wind, so then it gives you any more power basically. So, so I carry my uh, blades, I have obviously my Phantom, 
nicely packed in there. This actually goes right down, so it protects your um, camera at the bottom there because it's a nice big, big, you can see from there, it's a nice big hole there and it sits down in nice and neatly, protecting everything in there. Obviously my controller, i also got the, uh, this is this is about a tenner from eBay which allows me to put my, my iPad mini on it so I can use my iPad mini. Um, I did find it was quite bulky and heavy on here anyway, so I tend to sort of stick with my phone. Um, my, my, my charger, because then that goes with my um, external charger for the car, um, and the cable for it, so that goes on that side there. And I also carry on me my spare battery, uh, which is obviously charged, spare battery. And at the bottom here, I actually keep, which is handy, multiple purse of screwdriver. Because when I bought my um, charging unit for the car, I had to screw the cable on the hand so I brought that. But that's useful because it's got lots of different things that they need for. You never know when you're out about what you might need for, so I carry one then with me. And then also I do carry spare spare batteries for the controller. Um, because I've noticed um, when it gets a bit flat, um, when you're flying, you tend to lose signal with it quickly. So if you are flying with your controller and you're noticing it, um, you're losing signal um, or control of your, of your uh, uh, Phantom, it could be the battery is low in there. When they get too low, uh, I have actually got a point where I, I did put my controller on and I, the back of the Phantom flashed, uh, I think it's an orangey colour, and it wouldn't shift and I thought it might be compass calibration not working, but it wasn't, it was actually telling me that the controller's back was flat. <laughs> so I replaced those and it's fine. Uh, and also I've noticed before, um, when I was flying, I was flying quite well, quite quite a few weeks, and in a particular week, I was flying. I was finding it kept cutting out, kept losing control, and I wasn't very far away. You could still see it. It's literally about what 60 feet away, and I found it was because when the batteries get lower, they're obviously not actually sending out the signal uh, any further. It's getting weak, so press batteries was fine again. So, so if you do find you, you, you're returning home or check those bits out. Um, that's what I carry in my bag anyway. So spare battery that I've got somehow squeeze but because I've got other bits and pieces quite a lot I mean you don't really want to carry this unit around with you so it'll stay in the car anyway so it doesn't need to be packed in your bag that's why I can carry my packs in my bag and I also do carry which I've not actually got in my bag at the moment but I do carry another screwdriver with me which actually allows me to get allows me to undo these screws here so if I have any problems um, it actually allows me to undo it so I can carry that as well so that's worth doing getting getting a little set together that will use all these. Um, and also I would carry, which I've got to do, is when I brought this chassis, because I broke this chassis before I crashed it, bought another chassis, it comes with every s screw in the Phantom possible, and it's worth carrying them with you as well. So if you do end up flying, you end up losing, because I noticed that after so many, so many hours of flying, these do show they're coming loose. That's worth carrying them, just in case they come loose and you don't realise it, but every now and again, Turn your fan upside down, give them a quick tight around to make sure they're nice and tight, it should be fine. Um, so that's what came in my bag. So that, that, that gets carried with me everywhere I go. It's always packed in the car every day, just in case the weather changes, I can get it out and away we go. So that, and then also what I carry as well, because now I'm using the Phantom uh, flying and aerial views, I also want to do sort of lots of low level views as well. So and I also carry my, I've got another bag that carries my, my cameras, my DS, DLSR camera as well, taking the normal standard still shots. But also I carry this with me, it's a nice little 9 litre plastic container box and it sits in the car. What I've got in there, I carry another spare SLR camera, which is the Samsung. Um, it is 40 megapixels. So it takes great shots. So uh, I come. I carry two lenses with that, which is that one for standard normal shots, and then for really close up stuff, I, I actually carry, you know, um, this lens as well, which is a Samsung 50 to 20 mil lens, which is really nice. So that gets packed away. And um, because I also got a Canon camera, I do carry. I do carry my another spare uh, lens, and that comes with a special filter uh, on the lens, which basically makes blue look really nice, blue, greens look green, so it makes it all the colours stand out. It's a really good um, filter to have on, on your lens. Um, so that I get carry that as well. I carry my um, GoPro charger, so because this will plug into uh, standard main, so again, 
use the car charger. I can recharge my GoPro batteries in this way. So if you do have a Phantom 2 and you use a GoPro, um, buy one of these. I know you can get ones that do it two at a time. And invest in one of those. You can charge up on the go because obviously you don't want to be flying in any battery in your GoPro goes. So I carry that with me. And that comes with that actually comes with its own cigarette lighter to be charged separately. I forgot about that. Or put it directly in that box. So that's good. Um, we'll talk about this one in a minute. Then in here I carry um, various, um, you can see that, I carry various GoPro um, cases. I've got my straps, my cameras, spare needs, um, pens. I've got a, an LDC display for my GoPro, so I carry the, the, the chassis for that as well. And all the various bits to clip on stuff. And I carry my extra filters and extra clips for my GoPro. So it depends what I want to do. I see a guy running around on a bike up and down on some ramps, so I'll strap that to his bike and say, hey, yeah, can I have some footage done? So I don't have to fly. So that's what I'm carrying there. And the biggest thing, the best thing I've got, which um, let me just pull this back, um, that goes with me all the time, is a new toy that I purchased for my GoPro. So obviously I've got a Phantom Vision 2, so I don't need to use my GoPro on the, on the bottom. Um, so what I do is, uh, in here I put in a, my extra batteries for my GoPro anyway, So, and I keep this little case. And this is my new toy, which is, I've done, I've done a review on this on another channel of mine, and this is the uh, G3 um, handheld gimbal. So it's a bit like uh, the Phantom 2 gimbal, but this is a handheld gimbal. So I can put my GoPro on there, I can walk around basically, I can't actually show you because I'm actually using my GoPro at the moment to film film this um, video but you put it in there you see where obviously where the GoPro goes and it's full gimbalized two access gimbal and I can run around and have stable footage uh, running around with it which is a good because um, I could use this for um, I'm, not, I'm going to actually do some shots of my phantom flying in the air it's quite hard once it's hovering then I'll use this to sort of like zoom around to get some nice sort of um, low cut views but this is quite good because when I'm over in the park and stuff with my kids at weekends, I take this out a lot and I film them playing, running around, and it's great. And I get some shots and then I put some videos together of the kids um, having a laugh, basically, you know, having a great time. So that's what I use that for. And, um, and obviously, when I'm out and about filming, um, I'm going to do some, some tutorial stuff outside now. So I'm going to get my phantom out and show you how to. Um, I always hand hand land it where I hold on to it and I grab a hold of it. I never let it land it on the ground. Um, I find it really easy just to get it above my head, grab onto it, cut the power, and away we go. So um, I'll do lots of those tips and hips as well. So when the weather gets a bit better, I'll be out and about, and I'll take my GoPro with me, and we'll film some more, and I will film some of this gimbal as well, uh, get the idea of like um, what, what you can use. Um, so Phantom's not always just about filming aerial views, but you can use Phantom for low level flying, as well as using the GoPro on the handheld gimbal and combining the footage together make it a more interesting video. So I might do some tutorials on that to make this channel a bit more interesting so it's not just about the Phantom Vision. Because there's so much you can do on the Phantom Vision but it's not enough to run a, a channel every week about Phantom Mist, there's new stuff coming out unless you've got a lot of money to spend on new toys and gadgets. But I will be purchasing some new stuff because I'm thinking of buying a Phantom 2 because I'm in the middle of purchasing the, the GoPro Hero 4 because I really like to do some aerial views in 4K. I'm getting above the 1080p stuff now. I'd like to sort of start filming because I've just brought a new, um, you can probably see it in view now, a new 4K screen from the Mac so I can actually start playing about 4K footage. Um, but the GoPro 3 only does uh, 4K at a certain, sp certain frames per second. So I want, I'm going to buy a GoPro 4 and then I'm going to purchase um, Phantom Vision 2 with the 3 axis gimbal and we'll modify so we can get the GoPro 4 working on it. I've got a feeling the GoPro 4 probably will work on the gimbal because I've been looking at various sources of videos and there's one guy out there, again I'll put his links at the bottom, where he's got, obviously he does better than, than we do on, on our own channels and uh, he um, he's actually weighed them all, he's weighed the GoPro 3 3s and 4s and there's not a lot of weight difference, there's only a very small amount of weight difference between the 3 and the 4. Um, so it may, may not need to modify, but we'll put it to test on um, because I'm saving money at the moment, uh, and then I'll, I'll put that and buy um, Phantom Vision 2. We'll put fit FPV on it, um, so I can go through all the stages of installing the FPV. Make it, I'll make. I'm going to make these videos very simple. I'm going to show you the simple ways of doing stuff, 
uh, and make it easier so it doesn't look complicated because a lot of videos I've seen at the moment where people modify their uh, phantoms it looks very very complicated but I'm going to simplify things down because I'm not an electrician I'm not a, a, a hobbyist craft sort of person so I'm going to um, do something very simple and easy for you guys to follow through so um, watch out for those videos next um, yeah so that's they're, they're all it's carried quite a bit but obviously you've got a big enough boot in the car you can all sorts in there um, you could carry spares and things like that with it but there you go that's what I carry in my car with my bits charging it I've got to get another one of these because um, I need to put that in it <laughs> so and uh, that's about it for the moment for this video. So um, what I'll do is um, I'll put some more footage together of my. Um, I mean, I've got loads and loads of footage, so I'm going to start putting some of that more up for you guys to have a look at, see what I've been doing over the last few months. Um, I'm going to snap it together as a sneak, uh, as a sneak intro. I'm not going to give you like 15 minutes of me just flying around, and I'm going to snip things together, make it more fun, more interesting. Um, so you can know what you can do with your footage apart from just showing 15 minutes of your flight time and uh, gives you more ideas what you can do it's very simple anyway um, and I'll do a video on um, how I use the editing suite uh, again I'm not an editor, I'm not a graphic design person very much pick stuff up going through so I'm using simple tools um, to make it quick and easy because the last thing I want to do is spend a whole day editing footage or learning how to put stuff together on it quick, I want to film it download it, snap it together, upload it and I want you guys to sort of know how I do that so you can do the same so again I'm not a professional I've never studied uh, graphic design uh, or any sort of video work I literally picked it up because it's things I, I enjoy doing now I, I'm a 4 IT consultant I've given that up now because I love all my um, toys and boy toys I'm sure you guys love the same so we will share the experience very long again if you like this video anything you want me to, to look at um, you're not sure or you want me to tell you how to do certain things please please do comment let me know I'm on Twitter now so if you look on Twitter I'm on that um, I think my Twitter username is uh, Jack at DJI Phantom so Twitter me uh, any comments suggestions or things you want me to look into or you've got questions I'm doing a lot more on the um, CAA and uh, rules and regulations because things are changing quite rapidly and um, because there's more Phantoms in the UK uh, things are changing uh, at the moment. I found a company that does the course, so if you want to do this at Living, uh, again I'll do another video on uh, who to speak to, I've got the correct pricing and I'm, I'm going to simplify it down because it's very complicated and what you need to do, training, costs, who need contact next, we'll put all that together for you in our video as well. Um, and that's about it really for today, so if you like this video don't forget, please subscribe, comment below, Send me your twi send Twitters uh, and link in with us and stuff. And if you like my videos, share them out with everybody else so I can make this channel a bit more better, get more subscribers on board, and I can do a lot more things. Because um, my, my next projects are is Build a Phantom 2, FPV are all up, put a GoPro 4 on, underneath to get nice 4K footage. Once I've done that, I'm, I'm planning to do the X900 or if I get enough cash, the S1000, building that together. And I'm looking at the moment, I'm still looking at the moment, is I want to do the S1000 or the S900. But what's stopping me is I want to fit it with GoPro cameras underneath. I don't want to stick it with great big, I don't want to put my SLR on it because my SLR camera can only do 1080p. But with extended flight time and less heavy equipment underneath underneath there, I'm sure you could get GoPros. Um, I was thinking of actually getting two GoPros, join them together, make them and shoot them in 3D. I have it on a gimbal underneath. Be rotated um, 360 or 380, uh, as well as um, um, pan up and down as well. But obviously, I've spoke to DJI and they don't actually make the go um, the gimbal system for it. So I'm going to look at a uh, third-party gimbal system that will do it, and then do it as a project when we fit it together and get it working. So look out for that one too. So for until then, uh, happy flying and speak to you on the next video. Cheers.